Hi everyone and welcome to day 24 of our 40 day journey with the Holy Spirit. Today looking at the theme of leading and leadership. I wonder if you've ever had a situation in your life, maybe at work particularly, that's had you calling out for help or guidance, for strong leadership to overcome an obstacle or a barrier. I know I have. But strong leadership for me wasn't found in those who shouted or blustered or trampled their way through. It was actually in those who listened, who empathised and maybe took a step back before moving forward. Thankfully, at least in the police, the days of the authoritarian ranter and raver seem to have passed. Jack Leveson, in his thought for today, looks at the timeline of conflicts that reduced Jerusalem to ruin and threw its people into a pit of despair. He brings out the idea of the coming of the just servant, which scholars and followers widely believe to be the expected Jesus. And he introduces this link to our reading today from Isaiah 42, verses 1 to 4, which says he is not an object of God's mercy, but of his delight. It says, Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom my soul delights. The just servant will act faithfully, mercifully, and bring justice. That key word that's actually mentioned three times in this short passage. God intends to redeem and heal the sinful servant Israel. And this idea of the struggling servant who is in need of the just one comes later in Isaiah 41, eight, where Israel itself becomes the object of God's mercy and compassion. And he promises them his abiding presence. He says, do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God and I will help you. Israel has failed God in the past many times, but he will redeem the nation and not desert it. He will do this through his just and faithful servant who will bring justice to all nations. No loud and dominant ruler here, but a servant king whose rule will be based not on the ruthless exercise of power that was the experience of many nations around that time, but based on gentle humility and love. In Isaiah 42, 3, this just servant is described as dealing gently with his enemies and will not take advantage of the weak and the vanquished. He will challenge the traditional view that justice by Jewish law was for Israel, God's people. The servant king will bring justice and the Torah to all nations. He will bring forth quiet justice and service for God to his people. And as Isaiah prophesied, will not be crushed or disheartened until he has established justice over all the earth. In Isaiah 42.1, God puts his spirit upon the coming Messiah and the interlinking of the Trinity is up and running. Isaiah predicts the servant king as a just and compassionate ruler who will not break the damaged reed or extinguish the struggling flame. He will be the impetus for God's righteousness. Jews saw Isaiah as their messianic prophecy around 200 years before Jesus' ministry. And Matthew's Gospel makes reference in the New Testament to Isaiah 42 around Jesus' ministry, revealing that Jesus is the expected one, the fulfilling of that prophecy. It's often said there's more focus perhaps on the New Testament, because as a little boy once said to me, Jesus is in that bit. But the Testaments are inextricably linked through the fulfilling of the ancient prophecies. You could say in film terms, the prequel promises and the sequel delivers. Jack Leveson mentions the true story in his blog for today of Janusz Korczak. I'd never heard of this gentleman, but I'm not sure I've pronounced it correctly. But he rescued very many children from the Nazi death camps. <clears throat> And like the better-known Oskar Schindler, both showed brave and inspiring leadership in the most desperate of situations. On a personal note, I do recall going to see Schindler's list at the cinema when it came out around 1993, I think it was. And at the end, when one might expect the hubbub and chatter of people leaving and noise as they left, there was silence and nobody moved, as though not quite believing what they had seen on screen. That may have lasted for about a quarter of an hour, which is very unusual in a cinema. But they'd seen extremes of human nature, from barbaric cruelty to a triumph of the human spirit. So Korczak, Schindler, Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, Doreen Lawrence, Stephen Lawrence's mother, all servants, and like Jesus, all suffering servants, standing up for justice and what was right. Could we do it? We'd like to think so, but no one said it was easy. It still isn't now. Leadership often involves pain, sacrifice. But the theme of the linked Bible reading today from Isaiah is justice. 
The fight for that in so many ways requires us all to be quietly determined leaders. For justice is the outworking and maybe the working out of God's righteousness. Jesus as a leader never promoted himself, never advertised his prayer meetings, his mass meetings. He went quietly about his divine mission, leading his followers to do his Father's will and giving them, and us today, his inspiring leadership through his own godly example. Thank you everyone. God bless. Have a great day. Bye for now.